All right, so with that out of the way, for the adding the middleware and creating the view component, what we're going to do now is add to this view component. So in this view component, we're going to want to be able to see a list of users in the application, add users to the application, maybe edit their details, send out password reset links. There's a number of things that we probably want to handle from here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is pull in um, a bunch of users to begin with. So in this video, we're going to go over building out the table, pulling the data in using Axios, creating the route to be able to pull in all the users as in, in a paginated format, and also uh, the ability to create users using a user factory and that's provided to us in Laravel. So it's a way to provide fake data or to actually put real data into our tables with uh, into our database with uh, actual data. So, okay, so we have our managed users here. I'm going to go over to our code editor. I'm going to get rid of this page here and go over to our users management dashboard. In here, uh, I'm going to create a table and it's going to be with a class of table. These are all bootstrap classes. It's going to be hover and that'll be that to your head. Uh, so we're going to want to put in, uh, say, the user name. Uh, we're going to want to put in their email. Uh, we might even want to put in like uh, user since. And we're going to want to put in some actions on the side to work with. So you can see when I went to save that with Control S, it automatically recompiled everything there. Now let's go take a look at our table, see what we have. Great. So manage users. We have a table in here. Uh, which is great, and then we need to put in uh, a body for this. So I'm going to just put in some some data to begin with here. Uh, might not make much sense at this point, but you'll see what's going to happen here. So basically, we want to bring in uh, we want to iterate through a list of users, and we want to we want to put those users out. So in a very similar way, if you've seen this with uh, with the blade templates, you can use for each. And then within the same curly braces, you are able to take out each iteration of it and then display the data on the page. So very similarly with Vue.js, we do that here. This is done in a view file, so it's not like it gets compiled into a blade template. So we're going to say user.name is going to be displayed out. Uh, we'll put in user.email. Uh, we're going to also put in a user dot member since we're going to pass along a special property from our model an attribute from our model to do that and then here we're going to want to provide some some buttons uh, in a button dash group i'll create one button just to give us an example uh, it's going to be class of button it's going to be a small button and it's going to be with a color of warning and you may have remembered in the previous video we installed font awesome here I'm going to use one of those particular fonts here, so one of the icons. So it's going to be an edit icon in here. Now nothing's going to display. In fact, what we're going to get in here is uh, a particular error. I'll open up the console and you can see I uh, cannot read name of undefined, cannot read property name of undefined. We haven't defined where data is coming from. So in order to make that happen, what we need to do here is first of all, we need to provide we need to iterate through it using the v4 directive. It's going to be user in results dot data. And you're going to see why we do things that way. So first of all, let's create a script for this component. We have to wrap it in export default because this is going out to the main view object. And we're going to put some data in here. And we're going to say return. And we're going to say results. And right now we're going to go results null. Uh, we're also going to create a method in here. And it's going to be to get users. That's what we're going to call this. Nothing else we really need to provide in here um, that way. Now we're going to use Axios. Axios is built in. This will be available to you when you go to write this. There's nothing else that you have to do. And we're going to go Axios get. We're going to create this particular route. So it's going to be data and users. And 
that that'll be that there. And then once we receive it, we're going to want to do something with the data that we actually receive. And that's provided to us in this response object. One other thing we're going to add in here are some params, some parameters. So because it's a get request, this is like, uh, you know, tacking on the question mark and then putting on top of that like page equals one or whatever other params you want in there. Now we need to actually create this dot params object. So we're going to do that here in our data. Params. And I want page and we'll just do the page one. Now I'm going to add this up front because this is going to help us when we actually paginate through the results that we receive. Now in here, for now, I'm just going to go const, I'm going to say this dot results is going to be equal to response dot data dot results. So this might not make sense to you at this point, but you're going to see how this works when we actually create this route data users and you're going to see where we're getting results from in our response here. So let's go up to web. Let's create a data route. I'm going to do that prefix for data. Uh, namespace, we're going to put that in its own file, in its own folder for data. Uh, we don't need to add name in here because we're not accessing any of these routes from within any of our blade templates. This is strictly for Ajax uh, call uses. We do need to add some middleware, however, and we're going to add to this middleware as we build this out. And in the meantime, it's just you have to be logged in. It's not going to specify that you have to be an administrator yet. So middleware, web auth, and then we want to put this in a group. But instead of using a callback function like we used above, we're going to link out to another file. And that's going to be our routes slash web slash data dot php. And that we need to actually add to our routes folder over here. So we'll go routes, we'll say web for the folder, and then the file that needs to go in here is going to be data.php. And as we refactor some of our code to make it cleaner and more readable, you're going to see us adding more files to this. Now, this is a PHP file, so we need to put our PHP tag up there. And I do want to add a little bit of data up here for my own um, reference. So, for example, okay, this file here is for the prefix of data. Uh, and then the namespace everything is organized in is going to be the data folder in there. Now from here, I can go route. I'm going to create another prefix here of users. And I'm going to provide it with a namespace of users. And we're just going to do a group with a callback function. And in here, we're going to just say get forward slash, nothing else on top of there because it's just data slash users is what we want. And then we'll say users controller. Now we have another users controller in here, uh, but for now, um, so we want to make sure that when we actually create this and look it up, that it's the correct one. So I'm going to go into command here and I'm going to go PHP artisan make controller. It's going to be data backslash users backslash users controller. Now I'll go control P data backslash users controller and then that one sends me the most relevant one up there. Perfect. Now we need to create a public method that was called of index and in here we're going to return a response JSON and it's going to be contain our results. So you might notice back in here where we created, uh, where, where we initiated this Axios uh, rec request that I provide response.data.results. So we look at the response object, see all the data that's coming through, especially as we go to try to catch errors and stuff. But ultimately what we provide to it will be after the data.results. Um, if it's just data, we haven't provided any results uh, as a key name, as a key value pair array, that it's just one element within the array, uh, just the value itself, then you don't have to put results in there. You just leave it as a data and then that, that will work for us. Now let's go back to our, uh, other file here, back to the user's controller. 
and I'm going to want to pull in users. So I need to pull in the actual model and here we'll create a query and the query is uh, basically just going to be, we want to pull in all of them, but we want to order it by the newest first. So we use latest and then we're going to use paginate. And for the results of the users, I'm going to keep it small. And I just want to paginate 20 results at a time. Now we do want to be a little bit cautious about this here because uh, we have no users in our database. I mean, really we don't, uh, we only have uh, the one user that we created initially. So this should work for us if we refresh it. Well, let's see what happens. No, it doesn't work <laughs> because we have to go back to the users management dashboard. And when the component is loaded, we want to uh, call this dot get users. It's going to be the first thing that we call. Okay. And you can see now we pulled in our first user that shows up in the table, but we still get this error here. Cannot read property data of null. So the reason this is happening is because we're waiting for we're waiting for the, the request to return to us so that we can assign results to here. But in the meantime, view is looking here and it's trying to pull data, but it doesn't exist. Then finally the results come and then it populates it. It, it updates the rest of our template here. So how we get out of that error is we'll just put in the V if directive and we'll say, okay, well, if results are equal to, are not equal to null, uh, then we want to show it. So if they are equal to null, then it's not going to show. But if it's not equal to null, and now we avoid all of the errors down there that are being logged out. And you can see our nice little uh, font awesome icon in here. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to go through uh, creating factories for users uh, and then displaying all of those users. And we might get into setting up our, our user creation form, uh, so on and so forth.